the biggest reason that communities should support the family farms that surround them is this land is what provides everyone with clean air, clean water, and all those other services that we tend not to think about that a farm provides. If we want farmers to preserve and conserve and protect those resources for everyone, then we better start supporting what they do, especially the ones that are trying to do it right. I'm Travis Krause. I co-own Parker Creek Ranch with my wife, Mandy. This land that we farm on has been in my family since 1846. I am seventh generation on this property. My family has farmed for generations, but I never thought I would have been a farmer myself. Travis and I met in 2007 when we were both studying to become wildlife biologists and got married in 2012, but started this business in 2010. But our real goal at Parker Creek Ranch is number one, heal the land. Number two, I would say produce really nutritious products for our community. And that number three goes kind of hand in hand with number two, which is community, and that's building community around our property here. We produce primarily pastured egg-laying hens and grass-fed beef. Max, what do you want? You want a chicken? I don't know. <coughs> so this is our Bermuda grass field where we raise our laying hens. And we have about 800 birds in this group with two portable shelters behind me. Travis designed our chicken tractors. We have three portable eggmobiles which shelter and house our chickens. What makes this system really unique is that the shelters are portable. The landscape here is located in the eco-region of the South Texas brush country and the land itself is a real heavy clay so it's a really challenging soil to work with. Conventional agriculture, you till the soil, okay, so you're, you're ruining the soil biology and you go in there and you plant the same seed over a thousand acres. You've lost all your diversity, right? And then you come back through and, and spray it a few times and any major cropping system that uses tillage and heavy chemicals is going to be a degraded soil ecosystem. And once you harvest it, it goes on a ship possibly all the way across the ocean and none of that money really ever comes back to the community in fact most of the farmers don't make enough money to even make a living that's why mandy and i took this path of regenerative agriculture where it's a systematized approach where not only do we produce the animals and we control the land, but we deal with small independent processors that process our meats. We go pick it up directly from them, store it in cold storage. We pack it into a box, sell it on our e-commerce site and deliver it directly to people's doorstep. It's this feedback loop and that money that they give us, we put right back into the same very piece of land to make it better, not just for us, but for the next generation. So that it continues to produce good nutritious products for our customers. To us, regenerative agriculture applied to our context here on this land is managing the big system. So we're looking at the soil, the water, the plants, the wildlife, the specific livestock we raise here, and then the people and how that all interacts and goes hand in hand. We have management techniques to help us achieve certain goals. The first one is grazing, and that is to help us achieve the goal of creating healthy habitat for livestock and for wildlife. So we use rotational grazing system. We rotate animals frequently with our cattle and also with our poultry, using electric fencing systems and frequent rotations. Another tool that we use out here is our subsoiling, and that is to help us break our hard pan soils to reduce soil compaction and increase infiltration. Subsoiling is very beneficial to capture and store the rain. Our greatest limiting factor that we have out here on this land is the lack of rainfall. When you don't have the rainfall, how are we going to produce grass-finished beef? Well, that's storing and capturing the water when we do get it it doesn't solve all of our problems. Water is still a huge issue. If we're in a bad state, you have to sell the animals in order to make sure we're taking care of our land or move them to another property. We wanna be able to keep those animals, but we have to get them off of this land to allow it to rest. That's probably one of the most important things that we can do out here for land management is allowing the land to rest and recover after grazing events. We have some pastures here on the ranch that when Mandy and I started in 2010, they measured at less than a percent organic matter and now we're up to above 5% organic matter on those same pastures. For every 1% increase in organic matter you can hold 20,000 gallons more water per acre during a rainfall event. So going from 1% to 5% a 4% increase 
is an increased capacity on the landscape of 80,000 gallons of water per acre that can be stored in that soil for the plants to use during those dry periods. By supporting these types of production methods and farmers, then we can support a local steady supply chain. And so I feel like that is the future for all of us to get our healthy food is by supporting the small farms. I want Parker Creek Ranch to still be here 100 years from now, providing grass-fed beef and good eggs and chicken and all these other things and as a source of provisions for the community. At 65, 70 years old, if I can look back and, and see that, you know, that's kind of like going from A to Z, that's the Z for me, you know, would be able to look back and, and see the, that that was successful.